Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Astral Traveler with me, Retta. Um, today I want to say a great happy birthday to Type 1 Radio. We've been a year, and I want to say thank you to the founder. Um, it went from a thought to to what it is now. So thank you, Sonic, and the fellow host of the shows and the listeners. Um, join Type 1 this weekend uh, for the birthday party celebration, and uh, happy one year. Also, I want to thank Reset for, thank you for fixing my intro um, to my music. You are wonderful. Love you, love you, love you. And I want to send warm wishes to Free Energy J. Um, his computer's on the brink, but he's still in my thoughts and in my heart. Love him. Today we have a guest, um, a wonderful, wonderful woman. Her name is Jacqueline Dubois, and this woman is so phenomenal. You'll feel her spirit as soon as she speaks. Um, I found her on Facebook, and she's really changed. I was uh, going through something. It kind of was had some really bad, pissed-off energy. And just by watching a few of her videos, she really got me out of out of the energy I was in and really turned it around. And she has over 680 videos on her YouTube page. And her YouTube page is under Jacqueline Dubois. I think it was once One Moon Mother, but now I think it's Jacqueline Dubois. She has a website, www.themoonmother.net, and you can check her out on Facebook. Jacqueline Dubois, she is a, a, the self-proclaimed <laughs> real witch of uh, Orange County. She's such a magical witch. She's homeschooled, I believe, her children long before it became popular. Um, she has a beautiful garden, and the herb knowledge and flower knowledge she has is, is wow. Also, her knowledge on magic and on goddesses and gods and symbology, astrology. Um, she offers internships at her monastery. Her motto is to keep, to hold the place of love. Well, Jacqueline, thank you and welcome. Wow, Retta, that was so sweet. <laughs> Anytime. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about your motto and, and what you do and who you are? Oh, all right. Um, gosh, you know what? That's a cocktail party question. <laughs> that, because uh, I don't know. Well, here we, we live in Orange County, and so if anybody watches television and they've ever seen the real, the real Housewives of Orange County, which was sort of the show that set the spin off for all of the other real blah, blah, blahs of yes. wherever. <laughs> they, those ladies actually live not very far from us uh, in Rancho Santa Margarita, and one of them actually lived here in San Clemente, and um, I just got the, at that time we did have a television, we don't have a television any longer, but I just got the biggest damn kick out of those ladies because, I mean, it was, it, well, you'd have to see the show. Yeah. see, and so um, we actually, uh, I was the high priestess of a coven for many years, a ladies' coven, and it was called the Lunar Coven. We had lots and lots of ladies. And so many, many would come in and go out, and all of the experiences that we had were just so fun, exploring this sisterhood together. And Lover said one day, because um, we usually met on the Sunday closest to the new moon, Lover said one day, as he got home from golf, and it was after glow time where we settled down from, you know, what actually went on in our meeting, which lasts about six hours because we started always with a luncheon, and the few that would stay after, we just had the best time just reminiscing. And he said, you know, you ought to start a show called The Real Witches of Orange County because you gals just have the best time. And so eventually we did. At that time, YouTube wasn't really, you know, too much in the consciousness. Mm -hmm. And um, when it started to become, 
you know, more mainstream, I got myself a little flip camera and I just started, you know, just started doing a blog, kind of a video blog on things that real witches do. And, you know, just to kind of take the scary or the, uh, the, the, well, sometimes people would say, and I know if there's any other witches that are listening to this, are you a good witch or are you a bad <laughs> witch? I hear and, that all the time. Yeah. Or, or is magic black and white? I say, no, it's what you do with. There's no black and white magic. It's the practitioner. It's what it, well, you know what, I, I just ended up saying, uh, well, I'm a menopausal witch, and so, frankly, you just don't really know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, um, you know, we just, it just grew from there, and we're constantly... Have you always had the monastery, or did the monastery open up around the same time that you started so that doing... that actually has been an evolution, a process of evolution, and how that occurred for me was in my spiritual journey, um, throughout my spiritual journey, uh, uh, there was a short portion or a short foray that I took into the Catholic Church when I was in my 30s. And at the time, John Paul II was the Pope, and he, um, you know, he would give addresses or what's called homilies. And in one of those homilies, he said this little sentence, and it was, every home a monastery. And I was uh, writing a newsletter at that time for young families, young Catholic families that were homeschooling and living a life of frugality. It was called holiness in the home. And so that really struck me. And also, um, further, as I, as I had taken some uh, shamanic plant journeys and I accessed uh, almost all of my past lives, within my past lives, I have always lived within a temple space or a monastery or a convent or some kind of a place that was dedicated to being in service to the all um, and connecting to the divine self. So it was it was something that came apart came together quite naturally for us. So that's how Mother Moon Pagan Monastery came into being. And also I just like the way uh it sort of makes people turn their heads a little bit like a dog that's confused, like what? <laughs> so how did you go being a, a devout Catholic to to this paganism path. How did that happen? Uh, well, this is really an interesting topic because there's so many people who are having this experience right now. And actually, there's a lot of great books that are written um, by people who are working out this experience. I, I know one of the ones that is my favorite is called The Dance of the Dissident Daughter. And this lady happened to come from the same spiritual path that I had been on since I was 15 years old, which was actually a fundamentalist Christian path. You see, I, I was not raised in any kind of a religion. And so even though I sort of knew who Jesus was, and my parents were not religious or spiritual in any sense. They're just good people, people of the earth, hardworking people. And so I was able in the first 15 years of my life to sort of um, not have any indoctrination, no brainwashing, no stamping, no uh, overlays. I was able just to experience my spirituality through the nature around me and um, where I lived was still a pretty natural place. It was when Huntington Beach, Surf City, California was not built up. And so I lived next to the Santa Ana Riverbed, and there were lots of bugs and back then. There's not very many right now. There were lots of fields and farmers, and uh, it was a really wonderful place to get my uh, my grounding in my spiritual life because... 
um, also having my own bedroom, you know, I was able to connect with the quote unquote monsters under my bed and be open to imaginary friends. Um, it wasn't until I was 15 years old on a Halloween night that I was out trick-or-treating because, you know, I was not a sophisticated child. I stayed a child for a very long time, played with Barbies until I was like 12 or 13. But I did somebody too. was on a, pardon me? I said I did too. Strange yeah. how things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> So I was, there was a guy on a street corner, and at the time, in Orange County, there was a huge spiritual movement anyway, because all the hippies came to Laguna Beach, and so the love, you know, generation was there, and there was also a movement called the Jesus Movement, and so this guy was just on a street corner when I was trick-or-treating, and he, he just asked me if I wanted to pray and ask Jesus into my heart, and I said, yeah, sure, because I didn't have any stories made up about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was literally changed. I was not the same person after I did this prayer with him. I actually literally met Jesus. This is not the Jesus that the churches uh, march out in mm -hmm. front of everybody. This was the real deal. And I was, I was transformed from that night forward. And um, I, you know, I am, co that's why we're considered Christo-pagans. Um, yeah, because someone asked me that question. They, they had a question if you were a traditional or a Wiccan witch. No, I've never been a Wiccan witch. Um, I I only use the word witch because people can't see you. They can't talk to you unless you have a unless you compartmentalize yourself. That's the the nature of languaging. Mm -hmm. You can be completely invisible if you don't have languaging. Because, like you said, what do you do in the beginning of this? And that's sort of what everybody asks you at cocktail parties. You know, well, what do you do? Uh huh. And I couldn't figure out what to say, so I just started saying, "Well, I'm a witch, <laughs> and um, I'm the official witch, the self-proclaimed <laughs> official witch of San Clemente." And then that gives me lots of leeway to be as out there, or or I like to say fully self-expressed. People call me out there or weird, or but what? What it is for me is being fully self-expressed. That's, that's how I feel. I don't like to, uh, uh, because I'm not Irish or from Celtic, I'm not really oh, a Wiccan witch. I, I take a bunch of, from right, traditional to from the Wiccan to from the shamans, and I kind of mix it up and make my own witchery. Yeah. I think that some people, because remember, we have to have some box to put that in, some people call that eclectic, and I'm okay with that. I am too. I remember like a few years ago, it's so funny, and I say it often, like a few years ago, the person I am now, I would have said, she's crazy. Mm -hmm. She's one of them crazy people that are doing crazy things, and it's strange in how such a short period of time someone transforms from that into a total believer of, of, of the mystics and... Well, and, there we have the age of Aquarius upon us. Yes, which we we were having a short chat, not to cut you off, about uh, right now the energy we are in Virgo right now, and I was I was talking to you before we got on, and I'm like I've noticed in a lot of my tarot readings and even people around me that this energy is like a tornado. It's up. It's and we need this to wake up. It's unraveling and upheaving everybody, relationships, you know, things that was sturdy before is kind of on shaky ground right now. And material, it, a lot of arguing about money and and material things, and it's just this time that it's really waking, it's, it's like a big tornado waking people up. Well, that's what Virgo does. Virgo pulls things to, apart. Um, because Virgo is 
what's called a mutable earth energy. So within astrology, you have um, cardinal, you have fixed, you have mutable. And the, the signs that are mutable signs on the Witch's Wheel of the Year mm -hmm. are the signs that get, get us ready for the next cardinal sign to come in. So what mutable signs do is they, is they sort of clean up, clean up the energy of the cardinal and the fixed sign mm -hmm. to ready for the next sign, which is tomorrow. And that is Maybon or the autumnal equinox. And that's the masculine, right? Is what? It's masculine, right? Um, no, actually, um, well, this is what I say. But um, a lot of people feel that um, Maybon, which is Libra, which is, to me, um, cups, in the tarot, which mm -hmm. is the element of water, even though Libra is a cardinal air sign, it's a sign of the West on the Witch's Wheel of the Year. I'm talking for your for your um, for your listeners who practice the Wheel of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, this energy is the this energy is the the cardinal energy that brings in or holds down the the change of the seasons. Mm -hmm. That's so what this, cardinal energies do. So it, this energy of Maybaum is kind of like uh, settling, equaling out the Virgo tornado energy. <laughs> well, no, Virgo, Virgo is the energy that prepares the way for this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for all of you Virgos out there, you're at the very end of Virgo right now. Um, the, the astrological signs change on the 21st of every month, or that's sort of like the line that's drawn. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow we're going into Libra, which is also fall, the autumn. You know, so um, the, the Virgos that are that are out there dealing with the money issues and with the relationship issues, like what you put out there in the beginning, which you've been seeing in your cards. Mm -hmm. well, this also has a lot to do with what Maybon means. Maybon is the second of the three harvests. And at Maybon, we begin to, um, on the Wheel of the Year, we begin to say our goodbyes to the great goddess, Persephone, the threefold goddess, Mm -hmm. Because she's getting ready to make her journey into the underworld again, you know. So um, it's between Mabon and Sahuin mm -hmm. that um, she could enter into the the cave that brings her through the seven to the nine gates of hell, where she goes back to her throne room as the queen of the underworld. And so, what happened in the myth mythologem? Um, when we first see Persephone, we see her, you know, as this young girl, the the pride and joy of her mother Ceres, um, also known as Demeter. And then supposedly, you know, um, Hades or Pluto comes up and and kidnaps her and takes her into the underworld, right? Mm -hmm. And then Ceres is just, uh, Demeter is just inconsolable. And so... She takes away all of her joy from the earth, which is where we get the whole leaves falling and the dead of winter, because she's mourning her daughter who's been taken from her. Well, the other part of this mythology is that, you know, Persephone wasn't kidnapped and she wasn't raped and she wasn't, you know, dragged into the underworld. It was just time. She was coming of age, and it was time for her to become the queen of her own place and to free herself from a codependent relationship with her mother who constantly just wanted her to... It's sort of like those relationships of mothers who want to live out their lives that they didn't get to live out through their mm -hmm. daughters, mm -hmm. and it just becomes a sick relationship, and it's time for the daughter to break away. And so really that's 
the archetype of what's happening. And so you're seeing in your cards that a lot of people are having relationship issues mm -hmm. because the old things that are not working, it's, I mean, we've heard this for so long, you know, let go of that which no longer serves. Well, now um, the heavens, which are, are the planets are our elder brothers and sisters, um, now the heavens are saying, okay, this is it. I've been giving you warnings for a long time, but this is, this is what has to be done now. So let's get some relationships healthy as we move into the new positive timeline. And if you haven't let go, then we'll use the two planets, Pluto and Uranus, to really shake things up and to, to have you let go. And so... Um, on the 18th, we had our second of seven Pluto-Uranus squares, and the energy behind this last square was we're going to shake up some things in families because the old ways are in entropy. They're rotting, and there's some great things that we would like to present, but we've got to get rid of the rotting stuff first, and so that's one of the reasons why you're seeing the relationship things, mm -hmm. Virgo-ish. And then the other th reason why you're seeing the financial things is because Virgo is an earth sign, and, you know, the earth sign is also ruled by Venus, and Venus, you know, has a lot to do with our abundance and our relationships. And so, you know... We start reading the planets like we read our cards for you card readers out there. Mm -hmm. So everything is perfect, perfect, perfect. It's all going according to plan. You know, if you're having issues, try trusting and, and believing that everything is working itself out. You know, just let those things go. Something better is on its way. I promise you that. You know, thank you for that positive message. I, I really believe that. And as you talk about tarot, I, I really, that's one form of divination that I absolutely love is tarot. Me and if too. you do too, I have like I such it. a connection. But, and it's like, it, it, it's like I look at it as a mystery book that's different every time. It's so strange how those little cards, it, it, uh, those little cards really show, and they don't lie, and they they tell you what you need to know when you need to know it, and they're always on point. It's just so yeah. beautiful, and I've noticed. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me about because you you do a lot of everybody. She does wonderful tarot readings too, and she teaches classes on tarot too. But I have learned it's it's when I have a tarot, even if I do a tarot, let's say over Skype. I get, I mean, when I know that I'm, I'm right on point of what I'm saying, I get the chills all the way from, like, where my heart is in my back all the way to, like, the back of my neck. And I get the chills, and at the same time, I be, I'm very emotional. I have to watch, like, my emotions because at that time, I'm, I'm filled with joy and it, tears at the same time when I'm giving someone a reading, and I really have to hold that back. Have you heard anybody else say that? Oh, sure. That's part of, you know, that's part of the process is, you know, first of all, you don't choose the tarot. The tarot chooses you. And I, I found that. I had a weird experience how the, tar how the cards themselves, I would have never wanted to toss that because I was scared of Aleister Crowley. I didn't want no part of them, nothing. And I happened to go in a shop, and I was asking the guy for a tarot card. And he handed, I didn't even know which one he handed, and he handed me the card. And my whole body and his body was a vibration. And he was like, we both sit at the same time, whoa. And I looked at the cards, and they were the toss deck. I said, what the heck? I didn't want this deck, but I knew that deck was me. Yeah, you know, Aleister Crowley, I think he gets a bad rap because um, he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. And he was. And he still is. Um, 
But see, he the bad rap that he gets is that people have a quarter inch mile wide mentality and they they live in sound bites and so they'll take one little thing that he says totally out of context and um make make it mean something else. And really literally he he just he just had a very uh a very interesting sense of humor and so he would on purpose say things that would you know ha- cause people to think actually I'd like to say he caused people to wake up because you know you read his stuff and like his treatise on magic which is a huge thick book you know like four or five inches thick he he would say something it would cause you to wake up and then look further into what he was saying and then you could see that actually what he was trying to do was wake you up from the sleep mm-hmm. that matrix mind has you in and to look deeper that's mm-hmm. why I, I always like to say we must learn to look five layers deep we're so used to in matrix mind we're so used to being like conspicuous consumers of everything even even information you know we we grab it, we lick it, we throw it over our shoulder. We grab it, we lick it, we throw it over our shoulder, and we think we've experienced it when we've only maybe just barely got to the first layer. Mm-hmm. And it's time for us to settle down now that we're at the end of time. We're end of we're at the end of time as a learning device and moving mm-hmm. into an eternal realm. We can settle down, get off the hamster wheel, and really look deep into things. The world is a much more mysterious place than than what we've uh, thought it was because we've been so busy running through each lifetime. And you can find that through the tarot. The tarot is, it's called an arcana, and arcana means mystery school teaching or hidden knowledge that's what the occult means and it's about going five layers deep indeed going a hundred layers deep but kudos to us if we make it to the five layers deep the the tarot is built upon the kabbalah the teachings of the holy zohar this ancient mystery teaching uh, which is the tree of life and which is really basically what Aleister Crowley based his Thoth deck off of. Um, it was it was penned about the same time as the Rider Weight deck, which is the one that I teach from. Mm-hmm. You can get so much out of the symbols that are within these books of knowledge, and it's just like you know how how uh, the old Indian proverb says you never can step into the same river twice. Yeah. You can never see a card in the same way twice. I mean, you get to know it's energetic, but you're dealing with different people at different times, different situations. Um, And so the cards minister in a living way. And also... They will, they will color in the morphogenic field around you. So it's like when the clearant comes to you, um, they have like a movie projector that comes out of their belly and it projects onto the table that you're reading. Mm-hmm. And then as you pull the cards, the cards will color the picture of the little movie projector that's coming out of their belly. And then you both can see what's happening in the morphogenic field in front of you. But it's crazy that that happens even with speaking to somebody on the phone giving them a reading or on Skype giving them the reading. It it really goes that far. Oh, you can, well, because the morphogenic, the morphogenic field is everywhere. There's no separation between anyone, not even quote-unquote dead people. We're all one. We're all part of the same hologram. We're like little Mandelbrot sets of each other, you know. So, um, and that's really what the tarot teaches, because the tarot, like I said, is the Kabbalistic tree of life. 
And the tree of life is within us, just like Brother Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven is within us, not that's, outside us. That's, that's one of my mottos. I always tell, I try to tell my listeners all the time, start using your intuition. Start looking within for the answers, you know, and yes. you, know, you know it all. It's just the point of really having to trust yourself in your own intuition. Because if you ever have your intuition, you should have, you said, dang, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Because your that's intuition a, told you. That's rich. Because what does intuition mean? In tuition. Tuition. Your inner teacher. And in Matrix Mind, we have been traumatized and filled with so much drama that we're and told that we're nothing and sinners and we can't trust our hearts because they're evil and look at where that has led us we we don't even as a culture we don't even know how to eat anymore mm -mm. we don't even know how to feed ourselves the most basic of of our daily actions and it's because we've been stripped of our inner teacher or or we've we've had our inner teacher maligned. It's time for us to start like just like you said, which was brilliant. Trust your inner teacher. Trust your heart. Go into your heart center. Hold a space of love there. Le remember how to hear yourself and just keep practicing and experimenting with it, everything is inside of you. That's beautiful, Jacqueline. That's beautiful. And with the tarot, we we were taught it's. I've been trying. I try to use it as a divination every day for myself. But I've learned. I'm maybe you can teach me a different, tell me with a different way because I can't do like a three card for myself because. It's like a. It's like when I look at the cards, I don't understand. When I'm doing it for myself, it's like I'm an empty. I I don't know what I'm looking at. Nothing. It's like I'm not connected. If I do oh. one card, then I know. Like if I do it to myself, I do one card. I know what the meaning of the card is, so I can say, okay, that's the message. But when I do like a three card reading for myself, like for a daily, it's like I I can't connect with the cards. Well, try this, Rita. This is this is what I, um, you know, I take tarot students, private tarot students, and I take them here at the monastery, and I take them over Skype. And the very first thing we start with in our homework is everyone lays out three cards for themselves in the morning and leaves it out on their altar. And this is different, you see, this is different than having a querent in front of you because as a card reader, when you have a querent in front of you, you've got to be fast on your feet, right? They're mm -hmm. there for the reading. You can't say, well, let me lay these out and I'll get back to you later. Mm -hmm. You know, you must be uh, Jackie on the spot or Retta on the spot with that. But when you're laying out your own three cards, and this is for everybody who has a tarot deck, first of all, first and foremost, be okay with not knowing. Be in the place of I don't know. Because when we're in the place of I don't know, which is basically the fool card, the zero card in the major arcana, um, what that does is it leaves room for something to come in. Because when you know, then you know, and it's done. And there's mm -hmm. no more growing. So you're, you lay out these three cards and you're just like in this space of, I don't know. I'm open to receive. And they're left out all day long. And um, one, of the, one of the things that this does for us is when we lay them out in the morning and then we go off and we do our thing or if we have the, you know, the ability to have them at our desk or have them around and then just look at them, you know, chew them up like a cow chews cud, bring it up, and oh, oh. Then you start to see how certain cards show up in certain energetic flows 
as your day goes. And so you start to recognize the different configurations and how those configurations of those cards will always be present in certain types of archetypal experiences. Ah, aha, you say, which is the big, I mean, that's the big jewel to get an aha. Mm -hmm. you, you go to the end of the day and you look at it again and you say, okay, now how did this, let me just go back into my day, which here at the monastery, this is our nighttime prayer time, which is called Vespers. We have a morning prayer time, which is called Matins, and then nighttime is Vespers. And that's where we do an accounting of our day, and we look at the cards and we go, yeah, I can see how... Um, how the oh there's the magician card in the spread i can see how the magician card came up for me the as above so below energy how i made up my mind that this is how it's going to be and i manifested it you know and and i can see how um oh well there's the the wheel card and that wheel card shows me how you know i well, I got back on the wheel of karma again, and I sort of got caught up in, you know, doing the same thing that I always do and thinking that it was going to have a different result. And So what the three-card spread does for us is it, it allows us to go back into our day, take a look at what it is that we accomplished, learn from it, grow from it, and then it also, if you're a tarot reader out there, what it also does is it makes you more familiar with your tool of the trade. And this is very, very important, especially if you're in service to the all by being a tarot reader. And believe me, this is a service because it's not real easy work to be in that place. You've got you've got a lot of things that come up for you, but as a tarot reader, sometimes people will, even if they've paid you, which is a mystery to me, they'll not receive what it is that you're getting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or they'll say, uh-uh, that's, that's not right. And, and if you've done your three cards every day and you know what archetypical experiences come up with that configuration... You'd be like, okay, well, um, usually I don't get in people's faces, but I I trust the cards actually more than sometimes what comes out of the clearance mouth. And it's also, mm -hmm. the cards are funny. I've had people ask me to redo the cards a few times, and the cards come back the same each time I draw them. And the client's like amazed because they're like, they, they hear me shuffle on them, or they see me shuffle them, and the cards are basically each time saying the same thing. Yeah, sometimes people will desire for you to re re up the cards because they're not happy with the energetic that's on the table. And what what I do is I say, well, you know what, this is your life. And if you're not happy with it, you are the magic in your life, and you can shift this. And if you want, we can go shopping through the cards and find cards that you do like. And I'll actually, you know, allow them to go, quote, unquote, shopping mm -hmm. and find an energy that feels better mm -hmm. and then lay that down into the morphogenic field on the spreads that we have out there. And I'll say, so does that feel better? And they'll say, yeah, that feels a lot better. Well, what will it take? What kind of shifts will it take in your life in order to have this manifest? And see, that starts the wheels turning because nobody's a victim in this life. We have the power to shift everything. And that's what's so wonderful about laying the cards out on the table in that morphogenic field because that's, that's the work of that field is if you move things around on that table, it will move things around in your life. Wow. And then I have one more question, and then we have a caller that's called in, and they've been on hold. 
Um, oh, yes, there, there, someone's interested in speaking. Um, between the regular rider deck, you know how the rider deck, you can go, if the card's turned upside down, you know, you do the reverse. But with the talk deck, Crowley said he doesn't have any reverse. Do you still use the reverse process in the talk deck or no? I do whatever I desire to do for one thing. That's the first thing. And because I trust my heart center. And so, you know, a lot of times I'll have um, new students that have already read a lot of books mm -hmm. and think that there's dogma and that there's rules. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, you can start with those guidelines, but but then start, then trust yourself. Your your deck actually becomes you. It stops being Alistair Crowley's deck, and yes. it starts being Retta's deck. Wow, you know, that's beautiful. So, yeah, you don't have to follow any rules. If you got the goods and you know some basic, I always start out with, um, I always start my students with the minor arcana, and we get that under our skin before we even get into the 22 archetypes of the major arcana because that's earth, air, fire, and water. And mm -hmm. we must get that, um, get the basics down before we can move into the major um 22 major archetypes that everyone on the planet goes through, which is the major arcana. So, and as far as reversed cards in general, some people like to say, well, it's the opposite of what it means. Mm -hmm. I personally will sometimes use that, but I like to see where the reverses are, mm -hmm. what, spreads, what spreads I'm using. Um, I... Sometimes I completely negate the the reverse cards, and I don't even use them. I, I make it mean that, okay, this is not here. Sometimes if it's within the quote-unquote sentence that the cards make up, because the cards are words, and then when you lay them out into spreads, they become sentences, and then the sentences are paragraphs if you have more than one uh, spread on the table, and it becomes a whole story. Mm -hmm. So you have to see whether you know, that card is an exclamation point or if it's a comma or if it's a, you know, not, you know, it's all about being in the present moment with um, the cards and how they show up. Well, anybody who's interested, remember Jacqueline does teach tarot and you can get a hold of her at the, what's the name of your website again, Mother Moon um, uh, Monastery? Well, first of all, I have free tarot lessons. Uh, for anybody who can't afford, I mean, my tarot lessons are uber cheap anyway. Um, I'm $10 an hour. Um, but if you can't, because a lot of people are struggling with abundance right now, and so I have the Minor Arcana up for free on my YouTube channel, which is one, that's the number one moon mother, or my name, Jacqueline Dubois, or the title, the Real Witches of Orange County. My email address is nannycrone at cox.net. And my um, website is themoonmother.net. Also, I have a blog talk radio show with um, my friend Janet, and it's called Two Witches at the monastery. So there's lots of ways to get in touch with us. Well, thank you. We have a caller. Let's see. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hello. Thank you both for having me on. Yes. Who are we speaking to? Uh, my name is Steve. I'm in Arizona. Hi, Steve from Arizona. You have a question for Jacqueline? Yeah, actually, I got 10 million of them, but I'll try to keep them short and to the point. Um, I guess the main inspiration was when you were starting to talk about Aleister Crowley and how he would throw things out there to shock people into being awake. And uh, last year, while I was going through the teachings of G.I. Gurdjieff, or at least uh, his first book, The Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Yes, I am, Steve. Oh, yeah, well... 
I came upon a point that was doing exactly that to me. And so I'm like going, why did he just put this graphically heinous piece right there? And I'd go through and I'd hit that and it was like a hard stop. And I couldn't get through it. And so as I was talking to people, I'm kind of like going, you know, it was great up until then and then I was just so turned off. Did he do that on purpose? Because you know he's kind of sneaky, right? And um, so I would manage to get past that little point. And so when you were mentioning Crowley doing that, you know, it inspired me to think about Gurdjieff a little bit more because he was a strange being <laughs> all well, you together. Know, Brother Jesus dropped stinkers like that too. Mm -hmm. And um, one very famous stinker that he dropped was, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you shall have no part in me. <laughs> <laughs> and so many people, I mean, there were so many that left him that day. It was like a calling, you know. Uh -huh. And even though everybody else was still kind of freaked out about what he said, oh, you know, that's like so weird. Um this is something that many um, spiritual teachers do. And, and if you're in connection with your guides or your angels, they'll do the same thing. I have two angels that have um, had me in their course in miracles for about five years now. And they drop stinkers all the time. I can't, they speak in riddles. They speak in parables. And... Sometimes they don't even care what it is that I'm doing. They'll just come in and mess everything up. This is this is a practice of the guru. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a trip. You know, I, I I don't know where to put it besides that. But you kind of bumped me back to Gurdjieff, and I'm gonna have to re go through and um, look at that again because uh, you know it feels like a, a bump point. I was actually going over some of your content on your YouTube stream, and it seems like you're acting as a guide for me remotely without your knowledge. Actually, now you have some knowledge of it, but um, I bumped into your, uh, your YouTube video of you making uh, sauerkraut, raw sauerkraut from uh, uh, from way from uh, Kiefer, right? And my God, that it was so incredible just because, you know, you're not dealing with the spiritual aspects of things, and you do cover a lot of that on your, your YouTube streams. But that bringing it down to earth was just a, a real blessing, and I, I really wanted to share that initially, but you got me all over the place right now. Well, thank you. Thank well, you, Steve. You're so sweet. Thank you, Steve. Okay. She had that same effect on me. So thank okay. you for your call. Before, Do you have any other questions? Yeah. Well, maybe you can expand upon the Virgo thing that you were um, dealing with, and I'll take that off the air. But Are you a I am Virgo? A, I am a Virgo, and I've been um, running through a tough, time per se, at least a perceived tough time is monetarily and so forth. And so I'm leaving the Virgo thing tomorrow, as you uh, put it. And um, But I don't play in the matrix system either, right? I'm off to the side of that, just living on, you know, consider the birds in the field type life. Oh, and how beautiful. So it's, it, it's kind of fun, but it's yeah. tough at times. And it's right. tough for a Virgo, because Virgos, as my, we are very deeply earth and, mat and materialistic. <laughs> we like to have our creature comforts. Well, I still have those. You know, God has been really good, you know, and, um, or however you want to put it. But, you know, he, it, everything's taken care of. But, of course, I always go back to the matrix system and wanting to do more and so forth. I've been living out the um, uh, King of Wands type card for the last probably about a year. And, God, I really got to change that card. And maybe that kind well, of... Well, the King of Wands is, 
enterprise and distinction, it's how you're known. So the King of Wands card means that you're you're working out a new way of being known in the world. Mm. Yeah. Well, well thank okay. you, Steve. And if you ever, you, um, she gave her information if you need to get in contact with uh, Jacqueline. She's awesome. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you. Bye-bye. See, I told you, Jacqueline, it's your little YouTube videos that you had really have made an impact on people. And people feel like they know you and they've never met you a, a day in their life. You you have that love and openness. You just give without expecting anything in return. And well, uh, all of us right now, Retta, that's the beauty of what's happening in this cycle is we are all being called to authenticity and transparency. We're all remembering that we are really holy love generators. We are not sinful beings. We are the beloved of each other, that we've spent lifetimes together within this 26,000-year cycle. You know, you and I have been sisters. You and I have been brothers. You've been my child. You've been my lover. We've been all things to each other, and we're now coming into unity consciousness. That's what the Winter Solstice 2012 is all about as we align with the Dark Rift, which is the yoni of the Great Mother, in this Milky Way galaxy, it's, it's unity consciousness. It's remembering our oneness. And what's so beautiful about this is that the people who have sat in darkness through this long, hard, cold Kali Yuga, this dark, dark time, we are now seeing a great light. And it is true that all the tears will be wiped from our eyes. This is the end of all pain and suffering. And we are starting to relate to each other like each other now. And that's why we're so in love with each other. We're, we're now saying, you know, that this is what the new life is. This is what the positive timeline is. So it's not just me. It's everybody. And everybody's getting on the court, too. That's what's like exciting me so much is just to see people awakening and then saying, you know, if that old chubby housewife from San Clemente can do that, I can do what I want to do, too. And, and it just blesses us all. Yeah, it's, I mean, like I said three years ago, if you would have asked me if I would have had my own garden in the backyard, I would have looked at you like you were crazy. But now I'm out there producing my own vegetables, doing my own herbs, making tinctures. I mean, I was a nurse for 14 years. I was into modern medicine. Now I'm I'm going back to, you know, making my own tinctures now. And, and you even watching you, you've really encouraged me to do that too. And I'm making all types of things. And it's like, wow, where did this come from? It feels like I've been doing this forever, and I, I just started. I, this is my beginning of my path. I and it feels, it. and it, it's straight, like we were talking earlier, it's like right now the time, there is, it, it's like sped up. There is no time. Sometimes throughout the day, I don't even know, it's, it's, I feel like sometimes I'm in two places at once, like two and different dimensions. <laughs> huh? And you are. Yeah, you I know. know. Um, what, what this means, why, why this whole hoopla about the end of the world or the end of time, 2012, I encourage everybody to Google Terrence McKenna's Time Wave Zero, where he talks about the eschaton. He talks about what is math. He's a... He and his brother are mathematical geniuses. I mean, he's passed from his body, but he's still, you know, to me, people that are without bodies are still here with us. But he says, you know, that as we move, as we move into this end of this time frame, according to this software program, that time will increase exponentially. Just last week, we hit one of his peaks where he said novelty begins to increase at a breakneck speed. I think that was on September 17th. I think it was. And then he says 
in mid-October, we, we reach another peak where novelty increases even more until the December um, 21st, actually, I think his goes to the 12th. But what novelty increasing means is that more things will happen in a quote unquote space of time that never happened before. And it will propel us into this evolutionary state where we actually create the eschaton, which is heaven on earth, which has been prophesied. Because what happens is we all begin to see that we are, my goodness, we're all divine sovereign beings. You mean we're God? Oh, yeah, because we always have been. This is what all the gurus from India have said from forever. We're pieces of God. We're, we're holographic droplets of this great sea. We're here on planet growing God. And being here right now is the most exciting exciting. I mean, it can get a little freaky, you know, because everything is so malleable. I mean, you just think it and it happens, literally. Mm. I sold um, my um, Suburban a year ago and um, I, the guy didn't ever pick up a tire for it, right? And so I'm cleaning out stuff here at the monastery and yesterday I see this tire and I roll it into the garage and I simply think, gee, I wish that guy would have come and got this tire. Three hours later, a guy that bought our Suburban from the guy we sold it to calls me and says, I just bought your Suburban from the guy you sold it to a year ago, and he said you have a tire. Do you still have it? <laughs> you see, this is what's happening. And so now what we're going to be doing is try this on. Just try this on. Instead of saying, oh, my gosh, what did I do today? You know, because that's like the matrix says, well, you've got to do a certain amount of things to have value in a day. Mm -hmm. Try this on. Instead of saying, what did I do today? What, what did I be today? Because now it's all about being. And the end of hard work is over. It's not about working hard for abundance. It's about being a vibrational match for everything that is useful in the present moment that you're living in. Everything is going to change. Everything is changing right now, Retta. Everything is mm -hmm. shifting. It's best to stay as fluid as you can in this year of the black water dragon and to be joy and we were saying earlier you even mentioned and i say it a lot that the veils are so thin and there i mean the other side well there's many different sides there's many different dimensions but we're so thin to go to all the dimensions all at the same time that's how thin the veil is Absolutely. to go to the next dimension is like going to them all at the same time so well, dimensions sense? are different than densities. Dimensions are like um, are like sideways to us, and then densities are are moving up into other levels. But you're right. I I just um, completed sitting hospice for my neighbor Dotty. I think I sat with her for three weeks to to a month. I I don't know uh, how long it was. This is a neighbor that I've known for some 20 years, and she and I were never close, but, you know, our paths were meant to be that I would help her son, you know, so that he could get a little break. Mm -hmm. And um, he's not really, you know, like what we would call maybe like a spiritual person or a psychic person. Mm -hmm. But when his mom passed, she connected with him immediately. Um she passed last Saturday, and he had, he, he, right before she left her body, he was sitting next to her in a chair, and he thought, you know, it's two in the morning, I'll just, I'll just lay here with mom, I'll just try to sleep in the chair, and then he heard a voice in his head, which he thought was his, that said, no, go lay down in your bed. He thought it was his. Right, that's how this whole thing works in the awakening. So he went and he laid down in, in his bed, and he overslept his alarm. 
and he got up. It was like four in the morning, and he went, "Oh, oh my gosh, got to go in and turn mom." And he he walked through his living room, and he had left his radio on, and there was Michael Jackson. I'll be there. I'll be there. Just call my name, and I'll be there. And he shut it off. He goes, oh, this is too sad. I don't want that on right now. And he walked in, and and his mom had made the transition. Oh. Then, I, you know, he called me that morning, and I went over and helped him to set up an altar because, like I said, they're not spiritual people. And so, you know, in order for closure, altars are beautiful. So we got some pictures out, and we got a votive candle, and we put some flowers there and this was a new experience for him and I said this votive candle will burn for three days it ta- she'll be here for three days and then you know the beloved dead start making transitions that are like 70 day increments and so I said you can come in here and talk to her I brought some incense light the incense whenever you want to talk to her and then You know, if anybody else brings flowers, bring it here. And so he was utilizing that little altar for three days. And he had picked a gorgeous flower from his garden, and he put it in there, and it just stayed wonderfully gorgeous. And then on the third day, he went in there, and the candle went out. And it was one of those seven-day votives. But he tried his best to light it, and he couldn't light it. And the, the flower that had been so bright shriveled up as well and then he remembered because a lot of times we'll forget when we hear spirit talking to us then he remembered he felt like he heard his mom's voice say to him before he had awakened that morning it's time for you to get on with your life i'm getting on with mine and this is how this is happening trust everything that comes through listen to your heart the beloved dead are talking up a friggin' storm right now. You're mm-hmm. being able to access. You know, this is this is the perks. These are the perks of being here, boots on the ground, at this incredible time. Because it's not an an easy time, even though I don't like that word easy. Uh, because easy and hard is just you know like what we make up about how life occurs for us. It's just what is. But what is, is that we're here boots on the ground at this auspicious time, and we're the bridge people, and we are going to be talked about as the great ancestors in time to come in our progeny who will look to you, Retta. They'll look to me. They'll look to Steve, and they will honor us for holding a space of love on the planet at this time. And this is a pretty incredible time i mean we've got darkness is darker than it's ever been (laughs) Mm -hmm. but that's the way it's supposed to be Mm -hmm. everything is the way it's supposed to be and we are overcomers we've already overcome yeah and it's just great i mean i even i have i get these like imprints and sometimes i'm in my room and i have an imprint of beings all around me like, I know that they're there. I can't see them with these eyes, but my my I feel them, and I know they're there psychically. I have that imprint in my, in my brain. And I've been having a lot, I mean, this last month has been, I, it's really things are picking up this last month. And if it picks up any more, we are in for a roller coaster of a ride. <laughs> yeah, so stay in heart center. I came in here to the goat pen because Lakshmi is making a... Lakshmi, hush, please. Oh, which everybody, she, she got some goats. She has her own... She, she has a beautiful garden. She has chickens. Um, and she got her... How many goats did you get, Jacqueline, well, two? We, we have two, but we have a visitor. His name is Mr. Venture, and he's just visiting for a month to do the deed and then um, he'll go back, and I don't want to say this too loud because he's here, but I can't wait until this month is over. My gosh. <laughs> he's just full of it, I tell you. 
Yeah, and if anybody sees her YouTube video, she does Supper Love Potions, which I absolutely love your Supper Love Potions. Oh, um, thank you. Oh, they're so, they're so cute. And her husband, uh, she calls Lover. Yeah, it, I do not call him my husband because the, hu the word husband means the owner of, oh. and the word wife means the employee of. <laughs> oh, like. So he's lover. Yep. And uh, is he clear? Is he clairvoyant? Oh, lover is actually he's a medium. Um, he's psychic. He's been that way his whole life. Um, it got really intense after he had a heart attack, and then two years later had uh, open heart surgery. Um, things got. When I say intense, they got intense. I mean, dead people were just showing up at our house. Wow. Yeah. So can you imagine? But, you know, when we were in the church, this gift was focused and funneled um, as a ministry. You know, like if for those of you who have been in the church, this would be... Uh, this would be under the ministry of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and that's the office of the prophet within the church. And so that's how Lover functioned with, within that time frame that we were Christians. And people would come and get a quote-unquote word from God. and But really, it was just a psychic reading. Wow. I want to give out the number... Uh, Today it's three four seven nine nine six five five one five. The call in number again is three four seven nine nine six five five one five. Again, we are live and we're talking to Miss Jacqueline Dubois and the self proclaimed um, real witch of Orange County, and she's more than just a witch. Uh, she's a beautiful, a beautiful soul and beautiful woman. Um, so give us. Give her a call if you have any questions. She has vast knowledge. It's, it, you know so much about so many things. That she knows about herbs and, and, and their medicinal properties and flowers and her, her tarot, and she offers internships. Um, how do your, you have uh, live-in internships? You have Skype, Skype internships too, right? Well, actually, um, our live-in um, apprenticeships mm -hmm. are right now not because um, we we have uh, Janet, who's joining us here at our intentional community. Um, we don't have an extra room right now, mm -hmm. so we're going to be focusing more on our local meetup friends. And I want to encourage everybody else out there too. Is you know, it's wonderful to have the internet community. But the way things are going on the planet right now, it's time for us to start focusing, um, you know, continue with the Internet communities, of course, but start focusing on local um, groups and community because this is how we're going to be able to move through the, um, the fall of Babylon and the economic issues that are going to present themselves you know not everyone has to have a huge garden that's a lot of work not everyone has to have the goats not everyone has to have the fermenting rooms there can be some people within the community that make the kombucha there can be some people that milk the goats there can be some people that provide the orchards you know if you have community then you know there's many hands will make the the um, you know the life lighter. You know, well, so. well, well, Jacqueline, I, I want to um, invite. We have we have that somewhat. It's called the friendship agenda, and I'm a member of the friendship agenda. And there's everybody from all over the world, and it's a place where uh, it feels like family. We all become friends. Um, it's called the friendshipagenda.com, and we all, some of us have never met each other a day in our life, but if I was to go to England, I know uh, a couple of people that would make sure I'll be all right in England. And yeah. if we have that all, or if we go to California, we have a couple, it's like we're all trying 
to make this world a lot smaller where we're all open arms. And uh, to all my friends on the Friendship Agenda, hello. And uh, that's what we came up with this Type 1 radio. It came from the Friendship Agenda. And Type 1 radio is, is a radio station by us, for us, you know, where we've taken things in our own hands and went out and did it. Wow, so that's inspiring. So we invite you to the friendship agenda, Jack, and people would have a, would love you there. And okay. it's it's like a Facebook, but for an awakened community, where oh. everybody there is awake in different levels of awake, but they're awake and they're into. There's some that are into. Um, make an intentional community, some that are into magic or witchcraft, some of them that are into gardening. There's some are, are very much an artist, and it's where we all can come together. Oh, that sounds what And this is something that you, you put together? No, no. It was a, a, another um, radio host. His name is Freeman, and another guy came up with the idea and um, it's called either the friendship agenda or the friends of Freeman where it's just a it's, it's just a community of us getting together being friends from different places and um, like one of one of my best friends on there I would have never thought he's a 60 something year old older man <laughs> and he's like one of my best friends so <laughs> it, it, it and we're all like definitely too odd. In real life, we would probably never have connected. So it's, <laughs> That's so cute that you said he was a 60-something-year-old <laughs> man, old man, because <laughs> mother, is, oh, mother the, is 60 today. He's so what? Lover is have, my lover is 60 years old today. He's oh, having his second happened. Saturn yeah. return. Oh, uh, Oh, old Jay will kill me for saying that, but <laughs> yeah, because us old guys, we, I mean, I joke around and say I'm old, but I mean, we don't feel like we're old. <laughs> I mean, nowadays, fifty and thirties probably are like the same thing. I just turned thirty-seven, and my kids just think I'm the oldest lady in the world. Now, you mentioned something about homeschooling. Are you homeschooling? No, I wish if I knew better, I would have did better. I, I really wish, like, sometimes you just wish you had a do-over of certain things. No, I heard that, you, I, I noticed you were talking about you homeschooled all your children, right? Yes, I did. Now, that's hard. I homeschooled some of my grandkids for a short time. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of work. Your days must have been full. So how many kids did you did you homeschool, and they were in different grades at the same time? Each of my kids are two years apart. So um, I started when my oldest was four, and um, I was unhappy with the public school system. So we began, um, we joined in with a group called Citizens for Excellence in Education and quickly saw that, you know, our little group really wasn't going to be able to, to um, shift the monolith that the government school system is, and so out of peace, you know, having peace with my heart, um, we decided to homeschool. And it was a very, very, very young fledgling movement at the time. It was against the law. So um, I just kept my kids in, you know. And it's um, strange it, how it was against the law and that – then and now a lot of people are turning to that now yeah well the the schools make it against the law uh, for you to still do it unless you do it under their program because they get a price per head and they're now counting the homeschoolers as part of those heads and so they get tax money for that and so but what we did was we didn't we didn't have a quote unquote authority over us I made my own curriculum. Um, nobody, you know, knew that I had kids. I mean, they were born in a hospital, and so they, you know, they, they knew that these three people existed, but I never had to do vaccines 
on my kids, and I could pretty much teach whatever it is that I desired. And the main thing was that I I was really faithful about uh, allowing my children to think and use the processes and the gifts that they came in with. So, you know, Zach is what what the school systems would call ADD mm -hmm. and maybe even dyslexic. Um, and then my daughter, she would not have been able to go in and follow any kind of rules just because she's so... Uh, you know, she has so much energy and so much enthusiasm that it would have bored her to death. And so, you know, I had these these three that did really well being able to have their education catered to them. And then, you know, I only graduated high school, so I didn't have any further. It, I'm just an incredibly curious person. And so I passed that on to my kids. Now when they, and I never tested them either, when they were done, um, say for instance my middle child, Kobe, at 15 in California you can take something called a Chesby test, which, which allows children who are 15 years old and a sophomore to take this test and see if they can... Um, if they know all of the things they're supposed to know. So he aced that thing. He was in the upper um, 3% of all high school seniors. Wow. Even he was only 15. And it's not that we're smart. I mean, the group of us here are not that smart, but we are incredibly faithful. We know how to do a steady plodding, and that's just about all it takes, and, and a real curiousness for life, not just taking what people say and saying, well, this is the rule, I have to do that, or that's the law, I have to follow that law. You know, we, we pretty much believe that we incarnated onto this planet the same as the quote-unquote powers that be or powers that were. The authority, um, you know, who gives them the authority to be, a, why do I have to pay money to be on a planet that I incarnated onto the same as they. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are revolutionary thoughts for revolutionary times. And we've been like that. You know, we've, we have quite a, a history of, of revolutionary um, things that we participated in and have spent some time in jail for following our heart, for what we believe was right in um, protests when we were younger. You know, so this is, to me, this is what living boots on the ground is all about. It's just going for it, you know, and seeing how far it'll take you. And I was able to, 18 years, homeschool these kids, and they all did really well. My daughter went into, there's Phi Beta Kappa and something something else that's like that. Mm -hmm. Both my oldest daughter and my youngest son got that right off the bat, which shows you, you know, I mean, like I said, I don't think we're that smart, but they were able to do that. And then my middle son runs a very prosperous business that he was um, apprenticed into by lover and takes good care of his little four little girls. And see, it doesn't take much. It, once we remember who it is that we are, we can do so much. If I can do this, anybody can do this. And also, we didn't I didn't mention you are an artist. You know, on some planets nobody even says that because everybody's an artist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this planet is one of them. You know, it's just like the whole thing about healing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're moving into a place where, um, you know, it was apropos for everybody to have a shingle out there saying that they're healers. And I think everybody still should put a sign out, say you're a healer. Because everybody can do it. And then pretty soon there's just, you know, we're going to just see that there's nothing to heal. That everything is what we've created. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get that if that 
if that isn't working for us anymore, we can try something else on. And it, uh, when you were talking about how you homeschooled and it was revolu and you had revolutionary thoughts back then, did you ever think now people would be people would catch up or because now what people have pioneered, you, your husband, a lot of people have pioneered that were revolutionaries, you know, now it's like everybody is, is, is coming into this revolutionary mindset. The people are waking up. Did you think yes, back then people I always, would wake up? I have always believed that everybody is going to wake up because everybody deserves it and we are all one. You know, your toe doesn't wake up and the rest of the body stay asleep. You know, we're one. And so if one person, if one person manages to awaken or to have victory over anything, mm -hmm. it's available for everybody. What they do is they, they deposit that victory into the Akashic River. And anybody who desires to can go into that Akashic River and take out anything that anybody has done and put their own personal little flair on it. Mm -hmm. And make something even better out of it. Mm -hmm. That's what I think a lot of, I, I've, I say all the time, um, because I, I do astral project, I do go outside my body, and the, and I notice like directors, things that I've seen on the other side in different dimensions and different spaces, now I'm seeing them on the screen. And when you said that things are deposited in the acoustic river, river I think a lot of the, the people that they we thought were such geniuses really weren't geniuses. They just were they were taught this stuff long ago, and they knew that like Bill Gates and all this information was in there, and they just brought it out. We are all genius, and we all have the opportunity to get genius ideas out of the air. That's what that's what the whole suit of swords is about in the tarot mm -hmm. because swords are an air sign and air are thoughts and mm -hmm. ideas into intelligence and this is what Jesus when brother Jesus was doing what he was doing you know taking five loaves and two fish holding them up blessing them and then feeding 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish he was, well he, well, he just said it anyway. He said, you know, uh, if I can do this, you can do it. This and more. This is what's called getting abundance out of the air. And mm -hmm. genius ideas. I mean, just think, you're talking about Bill Gates and a genius idea. Anybody could have gotten that idea because we're all genius. We're all one. We're all, he did it, so we all did it. I just wanted to pick up on something you said as brother, you call Jesus brother Jesus. And I like the idea because I think too many people with this religion stuff has idolized Jesus as someone godly. But he was God, he was just as us. Him and us are the same. Yeah, he did. He called himself our elder brother. And we are the same. And what he is is a bridge person. Remember I was talking about being bridge people? Mm -hmm. he, he was a bridge person that came before. You see, in, in the study of esoterica, there is a very profound truth, which is called the one and the many. And so while we can honor our brother Jesus, our brother Buddha, the ascended masters. Ascended masters are those that are have taken on flesh and blood like we have and and managed to get boots on the ground on planet. And what they did was they they remembered that they were God. And how how hard is that? And then they lived it. They you know, instead of doing it, they be it. 
And that's why I said, you know, we're going to come to a place where instead of it being, you know, have, um, do, be, it's going to be be, do, have. You just be it, and then you have it. So th that's why I say the end of hard work is over. We're just going to access what's already there. And that's what he did. And he actually, somebody does it first. Right? There's mm -hmm. novelty, like, like Terrence McKenna talked about. Somebody does something first, but just because somebody does something first that other people can also do, you know, we give them honor, but it doesn't mean that they're greater than Retta or Jackie because Retta did something first before anybody else did. I did something first before anybody else did. And we'll see all of that when we get back into the in-betweens. Right now in third density, this is the density where all forgetting takes place. Mm -hmm. And it's also the density where soul uh, growth takes place the fastest because of the polarity that we, that we couldn't wait to get into. Because mm -hmm. this polarity sharpens us, you know, and... And that's why there's a waiting line to get into it. <laughs> Once we move into, you know, fifth density, you know, it's not going to be as, uh, it'll be sort of like a rest because, you know, it's not going to be as intense, as insane, but it might get a little boring. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why we keep coming back here to third density because, it's just fantastic. This is a fantastic medium with which to grow our soul. Wow. Wow. That was a that that was a that was great. I mean we I think of I, I thought of it like somewhat like that, but I like the way you put that into words. I really do. do well, that material is can be accessed through a channeled work, which is called the Law of One, the Raw Material, if anybody's interested in Googling that. Other channeled works that I really like for myself is mm -hmm. uh, A Course in Miracles, that's also very, very good, or the Urantia book is another one that's superb. Mm. I'll have to look up some of those books. I haven't really heard of any of those, so that would be, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, how long have you, have held a place of love? How long have you been on this path? I can't remember when I, when I was. When you was it? I've always, always been connected to spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, I mean, it's really imperative for me that I am in connection with the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I want to talk about um, some other things. Uh, Jackie, Jacqueline, she has a beautiful, beautiful um, different things she offers at the Moon um, you have some wonderful sage uh, uh, wands she makes. You make such beautiful things. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, um, you know, we're getting older, <laughs> Lover and I, and Lover is a little bit older than I am. And so what we're doing is we're, because we believe that a worker is worthy of their hire, um, we're we're looking to offer things from the monastery. Um, we live in we live in simplicity and we live in frugality, and we sort of tongue in cheek say that we have taken a vow of poverty. Um, the reason why I say sort of tongue in cheek is it's kind of like Steve. You know how you were saying about when uh, you read about some things that just like what why that doesn't sound very good. Mm -hmm. Our vow of poverty means that we're pulling out of the matrix and we're eschewing being um, consumers 
And so we upcycle things and make useful things from them and then offer them for donations to the monastery to keep up with our work. And what our work is, is what everybody's work is. It's your mission and your purpose for being here. I uh, enjoy those pink. videos of the little packages that you send out. Oh, thank you. you yeah, I love those. those. Well, we hand make a lot of things, and we have a lot of vintage things to put in there. But basically what that does is it gives us, you know, money to pay the bills that we have, which is, um, you know, the internet and electricity and things like that but our goal is to live very frugally but part of what this is doing is it's allowing us to put out our blog talk radio show it's allowing us to do the work that it takes to put out the real witches of orange county and um, our meetup classes so this is really our work just like a regular monastery would be um, where they you know, they usually offer things that keep the monastery going. Like our Uncle Ronnie, um, this is Dan's uncle, he was a Trappist monk for um, 25 years. And what they did at their monastery in Utah was they made bread. That's what they were known for. And that was their work, their honest work. And so that's what we're doing is we, we paint, we make uh, religious icons, spiritual icons, and just whatever comes up. We, you know, we take bits and scraps of this and that and, and make things that are useful, and then those donations are what keep us going. So thank you for letting me mention that. <laughs> oh, anytime, anytime. Hold on one second. Look on the window. Are those clean? I'm sorry, my son, my teenage son, I, he knows I'm live, and he just... Interrupt it, but <laughs> things do happen. Uh, powerful. <laughs> Mother's work is never done. You say don't interrupt me for the next two hours, and they seem to. Again, um, the call in number is 347 996 5515. Again, 347 996 5515. Jackie, I'm so happy to have you on today. When did you start your own um, blog talk radio station? How long have you been doing that? Oh, gosh, maybe two weeks. Two weeks? How do you like it? Oh, I really love it. Um, it'll, be, it'll be nicer once Janet gets here. See, Janet is moving from the Pacific Northwest. She is uh, joining with us in our intentional community to hold a space of love on the planet next to a, a war base and next to a nuclear generating plant. And we are going to backyard farm here. We are going to put out information that inspires other people to get on the court. We are going to be in prayer, hold ritual space, and um, live in peace. Live, live the eschaton now. And, you know, hold this space in a place that most people don't want to hold the space. You know, we're living next to one of the most dangerous nuclear generating plants um, in the United States, which is the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station, euphemistically called songs. Well, there's no angel singing these songs there. There's mm -hmm. nothing but debauchery going on at that plant. It's currently shut down, but the people who make their money off of that very, very dangerous plant and um, a lot of the people around here who are protesting it are calling it uh, Fukushima number two mm -hmm. just because our little San Mateo has already had a lot of radiation pumped into it from this plant. They, the NRC has shut them down because of infractions. You know, and then we're here at Camp Pendleton Marine Base where they bomb the hell yeah, out I've of seen on I've seen on Facebook you were saying they're bombing. I'm like, really? They're really bombing out there? It's huge, huge bombs that are meant to be sent to our beloved brothers and sisters in Iran and other places, no doubt. And they caused a huge fire there this weekend with these bombs. So 
where do you hold a space of love? You hold a space of love where you are called to. And a lot of people say, well, why don't you move from there? Well, the reason why we don't move from here is because a nuclear accident anywhere is a nuclear accident everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. And so we, we must be on the court. We must wake up to transforming our planet, our beautiful garden planet, back to the Garden of Eden. You know, just like, uh, what was that, Buffalo Springfield, I think, saying we've got to get back to the garden back mm -hmm. in the 60s. We really, that song is apropos for these times. And so we're planting a garden right here next to the 5 freeway. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best place to plant it. You yeah, know, just a, just, a, just an ounce of positivity can destroy negativity. That's my whole, and even as each person awakes, like they, they say, oh, I don't matter. I said, just you being awake matters. Just you waking up affects the whole scheme of things. Where to the point, if everybody wakes up, there won't be this war. There won't be all this anger because there will be enough people awake. Just the yes, process of being not, awake. It's not if everybody wakes up, it's when, because the the end of the story has been written, and this is a positive timeline, and we are not giving up this beautiful mother, our Mother Earth, Mum Gaia. She is our mother, and we honor our mother. We honor our father-son. And I, and, and I say she's graduating, and she wants us to go with her. You know, I always say, Mother, mother she's graduating. She's going to the next level. She, you know, she's, she's, she's had her time of war and all this stuff on, on her womb. She's done with that. She's moving on, and she wants us to move with her. We will. Because when the tide rises, the big ships rise and the little dinghies rise Everybody rises. Nobody's going to be left behind. Everybody mm -hmm. is going to make it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the the like, I, I these beings that are are in cahoots with the powers that were. You know, I, I always say I can't hate them. I don't want to kill them because they are being who they are. You know, they're not being anything but what and who they are. So the only thing that you can change a situation is you change you. And by changing you, the other situation is no longer. You know, these these beings, uh, these these beings, these grays, these hybrids, um, that's who they are. They're not... They're not godlike like us. They don't have the emotional. They don't have the love, you know. And people keep saying, "Oh, these beings, you know. Oh, let's bond, let's fight them." And I'm like, you know, I don't. I go on the other side, and I'm head to head. I don't have to kill them, you know. Just a mere thought can 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 kill them. You don't even have to think of that. They are nothing. But they are being just, I don't know if you've ever had any type of encounters, but they are just being who they are. Well, yeah, I have had encounters, and um, the and you don't even have to go looking for encounters. All you have to do is just um, listen to the Internet and then hear all the fear that's coming up, and then that manifests it. But, you know, um, when Steve was saying, and then you make sauerkraut, uh, and that's not a spiritual thing. I know, I know he didn't say it like that, but, mm -hmm. but that is a spiritual thing because this is, how, this is how you transform that is when I make sauerkraut, the, the lactobacillus acidophilus that's in there. Hold on, one second. I've been thinking of that sauerkraut every day since I've seen the video. I've been Delicious. wanting to go in my garden and make it. <laughs> Delicious. But you see, the E. coli bacteria can't survive in a healthy um, medium in the fermenting process of making sauerkraut. So that is a spiritual practice mm -hmm. because 
the sauerkraut is holding a space of love. <laughs> mm-hmm. and the same thing happens with us. If we work on ourselves, like say for instance, one of the fastest ways to um, for people who you know say that they want to battle against these beings, and you say work on yourself, one of the very fastest ways to disable and disarm that is to give up your human right to be offended by anybody. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the love chapter that love hardly even notices when others do them wrong. Mm -hmm. That's from the Living Bible. You see, when I say give up the human right to be offended, we are hyper offended by everything. We are militantly judging everything that comes our way because we, simply because we thought that that was what it was to be faithful to love or God, you know, so we were lied to. You give up the right to be offended and see everything as perfect. You will defeat these greys, these reptilians, these whatevers. That everything will be defeated when you just allow yourself to be in the what's so of the present moment. It's it's a very it makes your life very simple. I gave it I gave that offering at one Sabbath um, that I performed a Sabbath ritual that I performed, I gave it to our Lord and Lady. I said, you know what? I give up my right to be offended by anyone or anything. I give that up for you, which is really giving it up for me because our Lord and our Lady are within us. Mm -hmm. And so you do stuff like that, that's working on yourself, and that's really working on yourself. You know, instead of giving up meat, meat on Fridays, Give up that and see see how that changes your life. Wow, I've never thought of anything like that. That's a that's a that's a that's a great thought right there. You know, I just decided one day. I I remember I was like a lot of people. I was like ready um, to fight. You know, really ready to like get in there and fight. And the more I awakened, and the more I used my intuition and my my psychic within me, you know, you don't have to fight physically to win the to to win the battle, you know. Like you said, well, that's fight. the end of war. Mm-hmm. If you can, if you can reconcile all things within yourself, then because the kingdom of heaven is in Reta, mm-hmm. you can single-handedly end war on the planet. Mm-hmm. And just by declaring it, it makes it so. And you will then be tested. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just love the way that you just, you can switch it off. And I was saying, I said, I need to find my Jacqueline, Jacqueline. because, because. Uh, your husband's a Virgo like me, and we're good people, but our our... Our temper's quick, <laughs> and we don't sometimes, you know, we will rationalize later, but it, right then we're in the heat of the moment, and it's it's beautiful how you you have this calm, calm, common effect and really make people to go look within themselves and, and really think, to think their self out of a situation and, 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 and just declaring something, and that's the real power and the real magic. It's not about, like, the instrument, not about the magical tool. It's the magic with inside you that makes that magical tool. Right, right. And, you know, um, part of what you're saying about Virgo is maybe true just because there's such detail, folks, but in your feelings, it's your moon sign, actually, that, that rules how you feel. So why Lover, remember how Lover used to do his rants all the time? Mm-hmm. He's actually gotten better. But he his moon is in Libra, and so justice is very important to him. Sure. So you can look at what your moon is, Retta, which is easy to do. Just poke it in on Google, 
and it'll mm -hmm. tell you what your moon sign is, and that will give you a, an understanding on your um, what makes you tick emotionally. Oh, I'm I'm definitely gonna try that out. So you just put in your your birthday. Yeah. What is my moon sign? And you put your birthday, and it'll tell you what what house the moon, what astrological sign the moon was in, on the day that you were born. Mm. It, it's so strange how that moon has such an effect on so many things on this planet. That and that moon, what you know, was placed there, and it has such an effect on everything. It has an effect on the water. It has the effect on our emotions. As being a nurse, I would see the difference, and we would see that if we had a full moon, our patients would be. Off, we would have a horrible night. The patients would be off the wall. Um, so many different emergencies would pop up on the full moon. Yeah, that's like my mom says that because my mom and I have done the same thing for work. We we ran a screen company and we were the office, you know. And mm -hmm. so she would say the lunatics have come out. It's the yeah. Moon. The full oh my god! I used to dread I'll have to drive to work, and I, I before I never really looked at the sky. Now I seem to look at the sky every day, but then I would notice a full moon, and I'm like oh oh. But it's strange how this this moon has such an effect on people, on things around us, on the energy, on the water, on everything. This moon has this one little little moon up there. Well, that's a long story, the moon. <laughs> Very yeah. long story. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if we have any time to get into that. Well, you know, we have like 15 minutes. But we can talk about right now anything you want to get out and you want people to know, Jacqueline. Well, I don't really want anyone to know anything. Maybe, maybe it's best if nobody knows nothing nothing <laughs> and you know if we if we were all just like in that space of the fool card in the tarot which is you know the big giant nothing the zero mm -hmm. card mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to move with the shifts and the transformations that are happening much better than holding on um, to the ego I, I see that the ego especially in this and then alternative media and alternative thinking, there's a lot of ego involved. Well, everybody everybody has an ego. They're like our, our little friend, you know, that showed up for us because of the trauma and the drama that's present. You know, we need our ego. If we didn't have our ego, nobody could see us, for one thing, because the matrix only can see the ego the matrix doesn't see the soul so if you're going to go to trader joe's you need your ego <laughs> um you know so you can pay the guy and maybe say hi how you doing you know but um the ego is is the generator for the lower three chakras and it's sort of how we dressed ourselves up in this incarnation i don't think there's anything wrong with the ego the only thing about the ego is that boy the antenna is really up for any kind of like drama mm -hmm. you know so ego needs drama that comes from um you know the teachings on the pain body by Eckhart Tolle the ego likes to get slapped around a little bit or likes to slap others around a little bit you know, you just, just like for those of you who are parents out there, you don't just let your kid eat chicken McNuggets and that's it. Or your kid, your kid will tell you what, what they want to eat. You know, you, you just be firm and in love, you know, with a higher purpose. Where do you see humanity, uh, us humans here, what do you see us in the next ten years? What, 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 what would you? What do you see that? What, what's come up coming for us? Oh, I am. Um, I mean, that takes my breath away. 
10 years takes my breath away. I can barely even, like, keep up with every single day. It just gets better and better and better. It's, well, we're in a place of transformation. I mean, nothing is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it says in the book of Revelations that, uh, and, and in the Old Testament as well, that, quote-unquote, God, which is who we are, um, is going to fold this whole thing up like an old garment and toss it aside. And then in Revelations it says that there's a new heaven and a new earth. And um, also uh, in some of the epistles it says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it even entered into the thoughts what is being prepared for us or what we've prepared for ourselves. And so I've got nothing but, like, great feelings about what is before us. I mean, it's a little rocky. I mean, it's, it's rocky, I mean, especially at my age. You know, it's, it's rocky to not have, uh, quote-unquote, security. It's rocky at my age not to have security. I yeah, think it's well, that's what it's right like when you, when you get older, you know, um, but we followed our heart, and we felt like that was following the Holy Spirit to guide us in certain ways. And it's crazy you know. how it's, it's, it's like the universe is throwing it at us, like, well, you guys have such a high esteem for money and for this, so we're taking it away. And even though people want to blame it on the bankers, you know, they can do some things, but there's a force greater than them that are in well, play wait. right now. It's not universe that's, that's calling an end to it. It's us. We're the ones that are power. Our higher selves, the soul part of us, mm -hmm. um, is putting an end to that marginalized system, you know, that has to feed off of other human beings in order for it to survive. We're putting an end to it because we're awakening and we're going to remember how to access abundance from the air, how to eat the fruit that is present for us on the planet, how to refine our tastes back to um, the wholeness and the sweetness and the innocence. That's what's going on right now. There's no one to blame. As a matter of fact, we all happily created this whole scenario so that we could drive it into the ground uh, and resurrect it into new life. That's well, Jacqueline, we're almost done. I want you to re-give everybody the information where they can get a hold of you and, and listen to your videos. Please provide that again. Okay, well, first, Rita, my beloved sister, it's. I hope that you know how much of a pleasure this was to sit and have this lovely conversation. What a treat. Thank this you, Jacqueline. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, you put for everything you're doing to be on the court and to inspire so many people. You're such a blessing, and you really make a difference. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that, Jackson. I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I feel like I've known you forever, and um, you're welcomed any time to come on, on my show at any time. Um, I love the message that you're, you're giving, and you're leading people not in fear. And that's a lot of people are, are trying to bombard us in fear. And I've loved your message of, you know, no fear. And um, just the love that you have, you, you share, it's abundant. Well, thank you, darling. And I just want to tell everybody out there, too, our life is in service to the all, to all sentient beings. Uh, what we do here at Mother Moon Pagan Monastery is as a support for all of you to get on the court and be the incredible beings that you are. And if you would allow us the opportunity to, to pray for you, we would love that. Um, we have prayer flags, hundreds and hundreds of prayer flags here at Mother Moon Pagan Monastery. And if anybody emails us at nannycrone at cox.net and asks to have your name written on the prayer flags, we go right out. We are deeply honored 
to do that and write your name there. And then um, <sighs> Brother Wind licks your name <coughs> off the prayer flag and uh, all earth, air, fire, and water conspire together for your dreams to come true. You can also find us on YouTube at one, that's the number one moon mother, uh, or Jacqueline Dubois, or the real witches of Orange County. You can find us on Blog Talk Radio at two witches at the monastery. You can friend us on Facebook. We always post lots of really interesting things on there, and our Facebook page is called Jacqueline Dubois, and um, I think that's just about it. <laughs> well, thank you. If, one other thing for you local friends. You can find us on meetup.com under Casa de la Luna Madre Mystery School.